It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Nice to have you here today. We are in the midst of the middle school semifinals, the final three schools duking it out in a round-robin tournament to see who the two finalists will be battling for the championship in this year's middle school competition. And this is our 36th year of Science Bowl competition. We've changed things just a little bit because of the pandemic. I'm in the studio. All of our students are at school. Uh, we keep our familiar categories here, our six categories. If you've been following the show, Zoo Parade, Green Things, Body Systems, Let's Get Physical, Science Potpourri, Dateline Science. Each of our two teams will receive 18 questions. Different questions for each team, but of comparable difficulty. 50 points just for showing up and uh, no penalties for any incorrect answers. So it is now time to continue with the second of our round robin competitions. We have as our first team today, Charles Carroll in their first round. They earned 205 points. Today they'll be playing against Martin Luther King Jr. So let's meet that team from Charles Carroll. Say hello please to Kevin. Kevin waved up all of our viewers. Kevin is a great player, great captain. Omar is back, equally talented and a great asset to the team. And Jason brings up the rear, last but not least, also a wonderful science student. Guys, good luck to you. Let's get going in the green things category for five points. Here we go. Native Americans braid and dry a plant called sweetgrass that when smoldered gives off a pleasant aroma. Since sweetgrass is a plant that returns year after year, it's not called an annual that must be regrown from seed, but rather one of these P, as in Paul, initial plants. Perennial. Perennial? Perennial. I'm pretty sure it's perennial. Perennial? It is. Sweet water, sweet grass, rather, is indeed a perennial. Let's go to the 15-point question. Cotton, wool, and silk are all considered natural forms of this F initialed substance. The same kind of substance like that found in foods like celery and pears that are indigestible, but good for you. Fiber. What do you think, fiber? Fiber. 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 Indeed, those are fibrous plants. 25 points. Catnip, a plant that cats love to rub against, also contains a chemical that repels mosquitoes. One that seems to be as effective as this four-lettered repellent that you can buy in the stores that is the gold standard of repellents. What are you guys saying? Raid? 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 Raid. 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 Not raid. Raid is a, uh, will kill the insects. It's called DEET. D-E-E-T. DEET is in a lot of the repellents that you wear. Let's go to the zoo. These sea creatures, a favorite food of sea otters, have been described as marine pincushions and underwater hedgehogs. Oh, it's not spiky. Sea urchins? Sea urchins? Sea urchins? It is indeed the sea urchins. Good answer. Let's go to 15 points, and I've got a visual for you. Check out this picture. These mammals are the only mammals that really are like social insects because some of them are involved in defense, some are involved in reproduction, others in food gathering. Would you please, for 15 points, name these subterranean mammals? It's a mole rat. A mole rat. Yeah. A mole rat? They are mole rats, absolutely right. Strange looking, but very successful. Evolution has done well by them. 25 points. Last question in the zoo. Just as polar bears have learned to push rocks and ice chunks off cliffs to kill walruses that are down below on the beach, so too have certain vultures learned to pick up bones, fly high, and drop them onto rocks so that the bones will break, revealing this substance inside that the vultures want to eat. Bone marrow. Yeah. Bone, bone marrow. marrow. Bone marrow. Bone marrow. 
It is bone marrow, absolutely right. Good answer, let's go to the body systems. Five points. If you can handle setbacks and misfortune courageously, you are said, like boxers do, to take it on this body part, which is the leading edge of your lower jaw. Your chin. Yeah. Chin. chin. Your chin? You take it on the chin. Yes, you do. Excellent. Love your teamwork, guys. 15 points. It is a myth that men have more of these bones than women do. Both sexes, in fact, have 12 pairs of them, or 24. Rib, rib, ribs. 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 Ribs, that's right. The biblical story, Adam's rib. Ribs is correct. 25 points, last one in body system. Guys, I'm going to take you to the gym. If you go to the gym and you're doing a bench press, you're working on your pectoralis major muscles, your pecs. If you go to the Stairmaster and you're walking on the Stairmaster, you're working on your glutes, your gluteus maximus, and your butt. But if then if you grab the bar and you start doing pull-ups, you are strengthening these upper back muscles. Upper back muscles? You know, like thyroid? Thyroid? Yeah. What do you think? Thyroid? I think it's thyroid. Thyroid? thyroid. thyroid. No, not thyroids. Thy thyroids actually is a kind of gland. The muscles in your upper back are called lats. Latissimus dorsi, the lats. One, three, five, a very commendable total added to what you got the last time. And you have eight, nine more questions. Guys, good work. We'll see you again in a couple minutes. It is now time to meet that team from Martin Luther King Jr., the opponent today for Charles Carroll and one of the three teams competing in this round robin tournament. They're all great players. Let's meet them right now. Let's say hi to the captain, Martin. Martin, would you wave to everybody out there watching? Nice to have you back, a young man who's been with us his entire elementary and middle school career. And would you please say hi to Bailey? Bailey is a terrific player as well. Bailey, I like your, your, mat, your, your matching there. You're all blue there today. And Kelvin, who was on a winning team from Bon Mill Middle School, or elementary school, is now with the team with MLK. Kelvin, always good to have you here. Terrific player. Guys, if you're ready, let's go to the green things questions. Let's go to the five-point question. Here it is. In the recent movie, Jungle Cruise, the search is on for a flower whose tears of the moon, these floral parts, possess amazing healing powers. In the movie, Jungle Cruise, the search is on for a flower whose tears of the moon, these floral parts, possess amazing healing powers. Um. Do you think you know petals, maybe? Petals? Petals is correct. Yes, indeed. Let's go on to green things for 15 points. And it's a visual question. Have a look at this picture, if you would. At a greenhouse in London, cacao plants, which you see here, were quarantined for several years to make sure they were disease-free before being released, all to ensure that the world's supply of this treat was safeguarded. Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure glad that they checked those plants out because chocolate is what comes from the cacao plants. Good work. 25 points in green things. Leaves, twigs, and other high-growing vege vegetation fed on by giraffes and antelopes and deer and other herbivores is known by this B, as in boy, this B initial term that can also be a verb to describe what they're doing. Um, do you know? Could you ask to, can we ask to repeat the question? I can do that for you. Leaves, twigs, and other high growing vegetation that are fed on by giraffes and other herbivores, deer, antelopes. Those things are known by this B initial term that can also be a verb to describe what those animals are doing. Biting? Biting? Okay. Biting is a good term. Browse, B-R-O-W-S-E. That is known as browse, and what they're doing, the verb, they are browsing on that vegetation. Good try, let's go to the zoo for five points. NBC's premium streaming service 
is named for this flashy, multicolored bird that has long been NBC's mascot. What is it? Peacock. peacock. The peacock, peacock is right. Coming to you in living color. That's why they chose that peacock. Let's go for 15 points in the zoo. Good answer. The longest used currency money system in history, much longer than any coin or paper money, involved the use of cowries, C-O-W-R-I-E-S, which are beautiful versions of these, often collected by beachcombers. Shells. Shells is correct. Nicely done. 25 points in zoo. If you're out in the woods and you're trying to find an animal, the animal's scent, its tracks, even broken branches where it might have passed by, are known together as the animal's S what? Yeah. What S initial term describes those things, the scent, the tracks, even broken branches? I think it's scat. Yeah. I feel like it can't be that. Can you, Do you have something? Can you repeat the question, please? If you're yeah. trying to find an animal in the woods, the animal's scent, its tracks, even the broken branches where it might have passed by are known together as the animal's what? With an S initial answer. Scat. Scat was, is, is reasonable. It's actually called the spore. S-P-O-O-R, the spore of the animal. Let's go to the body systems. Three questions for you guys for five points. If one of these develops on your hand or foot because of friction, don't pop it since it protects the skin underneath from possible infection. Blister. Blister is correct, indeed. For 15 points, this was an amazing operation. An, a young athlete suffering from bone cancer lost the lower part of his leg. Doctors reattached his foot to replace this joint that now lets him run and jump. Try to imagine that in your head. He lost the lower half of his leg, so it would be knee, right? Yeah. Um, knee to replace his, his knee. knee. To replace his knee. Isn't that an amazing operation? Uh, how fortunate that young man was to come across that surgeon. Good answer. 25 points, body systems. Last question in your first round. There are people who purposely enter old uranium mines to expose themselves to radiation in the belief that it can take away the pain of this crippling joint disease. Arthritis. It is arthritis for 25 points. That's the way to do it, MLK. 135, a great effort there. And that means we'll be seeing you again in just a couple of moments. Uh, and we'll ask you your last nine questions. Good work, MLK. All right, it's now time to talk to that team from Charles Carroll, and they're doing splendidly as they have been doing throughout this tournament here. Let's find out a little bit about them before we ask them their last nine questions. Let's go to the captain here at Charles Carroll. And Kevin, you guys do so extraordinarily well. I'm impressed with your, with your calm. You know, you don't start throwing out answers that don't seem to have any possibility of, of being correct. Uh, tell me how you know so much science. Uh, well, our teacher, Ms. Chowdhury, she's helped us a lot. And recently, even in these questions, she, uh, she actually uh, taught uh, us about it yesterday. So, uh, so she, she has been a great student of science, but when she knows the kinds of questions we ask. So uh, she's not just a great coach. She's a great teacher, and I know she's a great role model for you. What do you want to do someday? Uh, I want to be an astrophysicist. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, he would be uh, very happy to hear that you aspire to do what he does so well. Let's meet your teammates. Let's go to Omar. Omar, great game going on here. You've got 135 points thus far. You are tied with the team from MLK. They also have 135, so you're sitting pretty because of what you did last time. Tell me about your, your goals. What do you want to do someday in life? Uh, I think I want to become some sort of developing role, maybe like an author or a video game designer. Wow. The, I can tell you're a creative guy and you're going you're gonna to employ those kinds of skills uh, if you choose either of those paths. Uh, you're a great communicator. I like how you talk um, and you, you really know your stuff. Let's talk to Jason. Hey, Jason, 
Jason, let me ask you as well what you hope to do once you get out of school and you've gone through all of these different experiences. And I, well, I hope that this will be something you'll always remember, your time on Science Bowl. But you're going to do so many things. What do you hope to do eventually? I hope to be a software engineer or a web developer. Wonderful, yeah. And those, uh, those jobs are not going to go away. In fact, they're much in demand right now. I bet there are a lot of people uh, out there who would hire you today if they could. But stay in school. Don't leave too soon. Keep up your good work. Okay, Charles Carroll, it's now time for your last nine questions. Let's go to the Let's Get Physical category. We have a five, a 15, and a 25-point question. Here's the five-point question for you. <clears throat> a new set of postage stamps shows 20 different images of this heavenly body taken by NASA's SDO, its Solar Dynamics Observatory. Uh, repeat the question, please. Yes. A new set of postage stamps shows 20 different images of this heavenly body, images taken by NASA's SDO, its Solar Dynamics Observatory. The sun? The sun is correct, indeed. Good answer. Let's go to the 15-point question and let's get physical. The upper regions of air beyond the clouds are known by this word, word which also defines a chemical long used as an anesthetic during surgery. It is E initialed. Okay, repeat it, the question. This E initial term describes the upper regions of air beyond the clouds and a kind of chemical that was long used to put people to sleep during surgery as an anesthetic. I'm not sure. Ethanol? It just doesn't sound right. Ethanol? Ethanol is a good guess. It's called ether. Ether. E-T-H-E-R. Let's get the 25-pointer here. Greenhouse gases are much on our mind now because of that big conference going on in Glasgow, Scotland. There are five greenhouse gases that we're worried about. CO2, CH4, which is methane, NO, nitric oxide, and 2O, nitrous oxide, and this gas, which is not a major greenhouse gas, but is still being discussed, NH3, a gas that in liquid form is used oftentimes as a household cleaner. Can you tell me the name of that gas with the formula NH3? A-M-M-O-N-I-A. Ammonia. NH3? It's uh, ammonia. Ammonia? It is ammonia for 25 points. That's the way to do it. Potpourri, let's go. Keep up your momentum. For five points in potpourri, an animal like a starfish is said to have radial symmetry. Looks the same any way you look at it. While we humans have symmetry as well, looking the same on both of our sides. Do we have bilateral symmetry, unilateral symmetry, or caudal, C-A-U-D-A-L, symmetry? Humans? looking the same on both sides. Bilateral. Unilateral, bilateral, caudal. Concave? I think bilateral. Right. Uh, bilateral like this? Okay. Side. Uh, repeat the bilateral. choices, please. Again, since human beings look the same on both sides, we have a certain kind of symmetry that's described as bilateral symmetry, unilateral symmetry, or caudal symmetry. Yeah, I think, I think it's bilateral. Bilateral. Bilateral symmetry? It is bilateral, yes, because if you draw a line right down through us, you know, we've got two arms, two legs, two eyes. We are divided in half. Bilateral. Good answer. 15 points. Potpourri. I'm very sad to say that only two northern white rhinos are left in the world. They're both old and they're both female. But scientists are trying to save the species by removing eggs from them fertilizing them with sperm from dead male rhinos. So far, it's been a success. They have actually been able to take a number of these fertilized entities and place them in another female rhino of a different species. What are those fertilized entities called when you join together egg and sperm? Like, like embryo. 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 I think it's embryo. Embryo? And embryo is the correct answer. Yes, indeed. 
25 points. If the sequence of a single strand of DNA, which is made up of nucleotides, has this order, because there are four different letters found in DNA, A, G, C, and T. If the sequence is G, G, A, T, T, C, and then if you look at the nearby strand of DNA that is its complement, and you see the exact same sequence in reverse, C, T, T, A, G, G, that's not known as a metaphor. It's not a non sequitur. What term describes a word that is the same if you spell it backwards or frontwards? Uh, pal palindrome, I think. I think yeah, palindrome, right? I think so. Yeah. Palindrome? Palindrome? It is indeed a palindrome for 25 points. Beautiful answer. Like your teamwork. Three more questions, guys. Hang in there with me. Five points in Dateline. Last July, over 1,000 small earthquakes occurred in this national park, America's first, causing some to worry that a super volcano buried beneath this park might be growing more active. Pretty sure it's Yellowstone. It's Yellowstone. Yeah. Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park. It is Yellowstone National Park, indeed. Dateline for 15 points. Just as the West Nile virus that's spread by mosquitoes is named for the Nile River in Africa, so too is another virus named for a river that is also highly infectious and often fatal. It is named for what river in the Congo? E Ebola. Yeah. Ebola. The Ebola River is right. Last question for you as a visual. Look at this picture. Gentlemen, one of the elementary schools here in the county is Mary Harris Mother Jones. Mary Harris Mother Jones was a heroic crusader for women's rights and for workers' rights. She had many tragedies in her life, including losing her husband and all four children to what epidemic disease that is spread by mosquitoes and for which a vaccine was discovered by the man you're looking at there, Walter Reed. Mosquitoes. So we need the name of the epidemic disease spread by mosquitoes. Today we have a vaccine to protect against it, a vaccine developed by Walter Reed. I think it's malaria. Yeah, as you guys like recent. Malaria was very common back then. Malaria? There's actually a new vaccine out for malaria. What we're talking about here is yellow fever. Yellow fever was the disease that wiped out Mary Harris, Mother Jones' family. Still a great game, 230 points. Great job, guys. Let's see if that is enough to make it to the finale. You played a super game, guys. We'll see you at the end of the program. It is now time to welcome back that team from Martin Luther King Jr. Before we ask them their last nine questions, a few questions about themselves and their schools. And uh, all veteran players here, all have been successful on Science Bowl for a number of years. We're proud of all of them. Let's talk to their captain, Martin. Martin, tell us, uh, here you are in the, the twilight of your Science Bowl career. As you look up, look back rather, uh, what are your impressions? Um, I've really enjoyed it. I've got some, I've get to meet a lot of people who have similar interests with me. I've made friends. And I think the competition in general has just been fun. I would recommend anyone who likes science and likes competition that they do this. That's wonderful, and I appreciate that endorsement and that commercial, and we hope people listen to you, and uh, they would do well to emulate your success and the way you've prepared for this game. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Bailey. Bailey, you're back on our game hi. here today, and it's, it's hi to you too. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is high pressure kind of thing. You know, you're in a, a tournament and you, you have to win two games this time to move on. But I know you're going to be able to do it. How do you know so much science? Because you, you always demonstrate that. Well, I watch a lot of random documentaries that have to do with science stuff. And I always enjoyed the science and learned a lot from my dad. Wow, uh, that's a nice tribute to your dad, too. And I know the hard work that you put in, and you're doing a super job here to keep it up in this last half. And let's talk to uh, your other teammate, Kelvin. Kelvin, I, I re always remember you from Bond Mill when the, you won the county championship and your enthusiasm. Um, you want to do something in science someday. I hope you do. And even if you don't, you're going to be successful because of your attitude. So would you like yes. to do something in science? 
Uh, yes, I want to be an electrical engineer or a bioengineer. Absolutely. I think you shared that with us before. And uh, what do you like about the game? Um, I just really like the competition. I also like doing science. It's really fun. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. just very enjoyable. I'm glad to see you hear you say that. Fun is the key word there, too. All right, MLK, you have 135 points at this point. We have nine more questions for you. Let's get started. Let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points, and here we go. Electric cars like the Tesla and the Chevy Volt have reported isolated cases of these bursting into flame while being charged in garages or even when fully charged. I would think batteries, yeah. The batteries, the batteries are... Exp battery? Batteries, battery that's experience. right. Right, some isolated cases of them bursting into flame. For 15 points, astronomers have noted that carbon dioxide ice collects on the poles of the planet Mars each season. Since the ice only lets light pass through it partially, like so many bathroom windows, it is described by this term. Translucent, because it's translucent. Translucent is absolutely right. Next, for 25 points, the massive Stonehenge monument in England has long baffled historians. What is known is that on the first day of summer and the first day of winter, known as these, the sun lines up perfectly with the stones. Solstice. Solstice the solstice. is correct. That's right. The, the summer and the winter solstices. Let's go to potpourri. Five points. A book called Entangled Life is all about these plant-like organisms whose underground tendrils link much of Earth's life together. These are organisms that reproduce by spores. What are they? Moss. Um, moss, I would think, because they reproduce. Yeah. Yeah. Moss. Not moss. Uh, let me add, because uh, I wanted to give you some more information here. They reproduce by spores, and these organisms like truffles are sniffed out of the ground by dogs and are eaten by us humans, being careful to avoid the poisonous ones. Mushrooms, I think they're yeah. mushrooms. mushrooms. Mushrooms we will take, or fungus, any kind of fungus, yes. Uh, for 15 points, I have a visual for you. Let's look at this picture. That is the underside of a boat. A bioside paint called tributylton is painted onto oil tankers to keep three kinds of organisms from attaching to the boat. Algae, mussels, and these familiar snail-like crustaceans that are often found stuck to the sides of whales as well. Barnacles. Barnacles, absolutely. And that's what you saw encrusted on that boat. Good answer. For 25 points in potpourri. Multiple choice. If a storm is registering a five on the Fujita scale, F-U-J-I-T-A, would you be in danger from massive flooding, powerful winds, or the ground beginning to shake? Um, powerful winds. Powerful winds. Powerful winds is correct, indeed. Nicely done. Dateline, we have three more questions for you. Let's do the first one for five points. Signaling that Facebook is perhaps bigger than the universe, Mark Zuckerberg has replaced the prefix uni, U-N-I, with this one that means above and beyond. Inter? Inter? Inter could mean beyond out. Um, inter? Meta. He has renamed Facebook Meta, the Metaverse, for five points it would have been. Let's try the 15-point question for you guys. Not too long ago, First Lady Jill Biden needed to go to the hospital after stepping on an object on a Hawaiian beach that caused a puncture wound. The danger of puncture wounds is that they'll develop into this disease, also called lockjaw. Tetanus. Tetanus. Tetanus, causes, yeah, tetanus. tetanus? Tetanus is right, yes. 25-point question, last one in the game. 
It was discovered recently that California's condors, birds, massive birds that are on the edge of extinction, have been able to reproduce parthenogenetically. Meaning what? I think it means they don't need a mate. They don't need a mate so asexually, yeah. I would think. Yes. Um, do you agree, Calvin? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, the California condor, a huge soaring bird that is on the endangered species list, it was discovered recently that the condor can reproduce parthenogenetically. Meaning what? I think it's asexually without a mate. Asexually without a, asexually without a mate? That is absolutely correct. Yes, the females can give birth to fertile eggs even without having a male nearby. 265 is what you end up with. A wonderful score. Nice work. And it is now time to announce the winner of today's game. As you can see, it has been a wonderfully played game. Really perfect scores uh, in many cases here in some of these rounds. Our final tally today is Charles Carroll, 230 points. Martin Luther King, 265. Remember, we will be adding scores together for the two appearances. So Charles Carroll, at this point, you have 435 points. What a wonderful two games you've played. Martin Luther King, you have 265. You'll be coming back to play Robert Goddard to see if you can add to that tally and get into the finale with one of the two top scores. So give yourselves a nice round of applause. Charles Carroll, Martin Luther King, Miss Chaudhary is out there as well, and Miss Butler. What great teams, what great coaches, what great science bowl. Hope you're able to keep up with the students today and join us in the next game and we'll tell you who those finalists will be. Until then, Dave Zarin, thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.